Okay. I just went. Oh my. Trying to find my charger. Supposed to be on my bed. I'm trying to find my... Let me pause this. Oh, okay. I found the cord. But I wanted to talk at least five minutes on this subject. They is talking about the Bishop Lamar Whitehead guy. Everybody. So I guess he's all over social media, all over YouTube, wherever, whatever, whatever. Now, what I want to say... What I want to say is, you know, they was talking about, you know, you're not supposed to have all that jury on, you flaunting all of that, and, you know, people from the church supposed to be humble, and I guess not wearing flashy things and stuff like that. Okay. Let me find... Ma. Hey, Siri. Uh-huh. Where's the scripture about wearing flashy jewelry? I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that. Could you please say that again? Okay. Hey, Siri. Uh-huh. Where is the scripture that talks about not wearing jewelry? Here's what I found. Okay, let's see. What does the Bible say about jury? Okay. We have King James. Uh, we got quite a few scriptures here. Okay. Now, before we get into the scripture, I'm going to say my opinion. Right? My feelings and my thoughts. And then we'll go to the Bible. That way... I'm going to be learning right along with y'all. 
So I'm not saying nothing. What I'm saying, and make this disclaimer, what I'm saying before I get to the word of God is what I'm saying. So that way you will see that anything that I'm saying, once we read the scripture, if it contradicts with the word of God, then it's teaching me as well. Okay? All right. So now my thoughts on the gentleman. Yes, he's wearing Gucci. Yes, he's wearing Fendi. Yes, he's wearing whatever he's wearing. I think the main thing I see is Gucci. And uh, I don't know whether he wear Louis Vuitton or whatever. I don't know. Okay. So, I think and feel that it's where your heart is. Okay, if you have a Gucci coat on, you got a Gucci coat in your closet that you done bought, right? Let's say you bought it before you gave your life. No, I'm going to talk about a safe person. I'm going to talk about a safe person, okay? Because that's what they saying. They saying the guy, since he's, since, no, since he's claiming that he's representing God and representing the character of a Christian, they're saying that he shouldn't be dressed in Gucci and let's just say designer clothing. There was a video that he had said behind it. I think when I first started looking at him, he had said in this particular video that God blessed him and he blessed him to have the money to buy these different things. So therefore, why should he look raggedy and stuff like that? If God blessed him to buy this stuff, why? If God blessed him to buy it, why not wear it? Why should he put it to the side and have it in his closet or don't buy it, even though he wanted it? In so many words, I'm paraphrasing his words. Um, because he's a Christian, okay? So now, my thoughts, my feelings, and my opinions on it. I feel and think there's nothing wrong with wearing designer clothing. I feel there's nothing wrong with wearing designer clothing. What makes it sinful if that's where your heart is? What makes it sinful if that's what you're idolizing? And people have to understand what idolizing is. Idolizing is not wearing the item. Idolizing is putting the item first. Okay? So you really got to understand... What God means when he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Or and no other guard singular before me. Which is him. He's the only guard. And what he's saying is, and what that passage means is that we as Christians and people. And th those that are in the world is not supposed to idolize anything as their God. Meaning that you're worshiping it. Meaning that, yo, kissing it and saying, like, let's say, for instance, it's a ring. Oh, man. This ring going to bring me luck. This ring is what's helping me make it through the day. Oh, my goodness. And that's my lucky ring. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go gamble, get me some money. And I got to have my lucky ring on. That's idolizing it. Now, you have a ring that maybe is gold. What? No, I'm busy right now. Um, you may have a ring or a necklace or a bracelet or a hat or a suit or whatever the case may be. Right? That you like. That maybe belong to someone that you love. And you're keeping that for sentimental reasons because you love the person, right? Not that you idolize them. Well, let me put this, this suit on because my mother wore it when she gambled. You idolizing it now. But if you going on about your days and your months and your weeks and your years... And you wearing the clothing, ain't thinking nothing about it. Now you come across, say, oh, let me put this suit on. My mother had this suit on. You know what? 
This is her birthday or whatever. So let me put this on. You're not idolizing. You're remembering him. The same way that he said about doing communion. As often as you do it, you do in remembrance of me. Right? So now, the gentleman wears his Gucci hat, his Gucci scarf, his Gucci glasses, his I'm Gu having trouble connecting to the internet. For help, go to your Altice Amplify app. His Gucci coat, shoes, pants, whatever. Whatever it may be, he Gucci down. Now, because he got this Gucci on, the first thing we think is he shouldn't have it on. Now, what people, this is, this, is, this is my opinion, but what you have to think, this is what I do in any situation, anything that's presented to me, I look inside of it and see how it's making me feel. What is it doing to me in my heart, my thoughts, and my feelings, right? So now, if you look at him and you say, why he wearing all that, that loud jury? He ain't got no business wearing no loud jury. First of all, the jury ain't making no, no sound. So the, the, how can I, what's the word? The, the wording that you're using is wrong because it's loud, loud in one perspective because you, because you see it. And because you see it, it's loud to you. Okay. Whatever. This is my perspective of it. Whatever he want to wear, he wear. If he want to wear a whole Gucci outfit and you don't see his face, that's his business. If he got the money, honestly... And if he got the money, God blessed him for it. He worked for it or he got blessed for it. You know, whatever it is. When I say blessed and considering of things that you didn't have control over and it was given to you. Not something that you went and did underhanded or on top of or whatever. And then you got the money or you got the item. But you work for it, you spent your money for it, you didn't try to get it no other way, then it's legit. You see what I'm saying? So now, if, if he's idolizing his items, if he's wearing them for show, and what I mean by show, to make people look up to him, to make people respect him or to have this thing in his head like, oh, I was poor. I came from a poor neighborhood. Now I got all this money, so I want to show people that I got money. That's wrong. But if he came from a poor neighborhood and he worked hard to get where he is and this is his interest, because every saved people ain't going to be going to the 99 cent store. Every saved people ain't going to be looking for bar bargains. You see what I'm saying? Look at the people. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. In my perspective. I I know people that spend money $300, $400, $700 for them church dresses that, and the hat that match and the bag that match. Why are they no different? And they got diamonds all over. Whatever kind of diamonds. Whether you want to... Call it real diamonds, fake diamonds, or diamonds that going to last a day. Whatever it is. It's all over the clothing. It's shining like, like Marvin. Shining bright like a diamond. Got your hat cocked to the side. Got your diamonds all over the plate. Got your gloves on to match your suit. Wait a minute. Let's not talk about Let's get to the shoe. Got some silver, gold, sparkling diamond shoes on. Got a pocketbook. They got a big old D in front of it that stands for Dr. Johnny Washington. Well, that's a man. So we're going to say Dr. Whoever it is, the female name. Okay. So now because it ain't got G's all over it, or because it ain't got LV's all over it, or because it don't got uh, uh, whoever else, YSL, or who, who all them, you know, them, 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 them other people. 
It can have Michael Corbs on there, but nobody ain't gonna say nothing about Michael. Oh, oh, Michael Corbs. Oh, that's a nice bag. I like that. So why you can't like a Louis Vuitton bag? See, and and my point is, is that it's okay for you to go out there and spend six to seven hundred dollars, close to a thousand dollars for a car. I mean, for your clothing, thirty five thousand dollars for a car, and um, a hundred and what four hundred and fifty thousand for a hat. For, for for a house, it's okay for you to go out there and spend all of that and get up in the church or get up in the pulpit or, or get up and say a testimony of the Lord, bless me, oh, you shouting all over the church and everybody clapping their hand for you. But here comes somebody walking the church with a Louis Vuitton on, a Louis Vuitton bag on, a Louis Vuitton scarf on, or a Gucci scarf on, a Burberry scarf on, or a hat on. Oh, that ain't for the saints. The saints ain't supposed to wear that because that belonged to the world. Really? It belonged to the world? That Louis Vuitton man is a is a designer. Just like that person that took the time and got their material and made your dress that you don't pay $700 for. Made them shoes. When you anybody got married, you go out there and spend all that money on a wedding dress. Oh, ooh, they dress look nice. But let a saint come to the wedding in Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Christian Louboutin, whoever else. Let them come in there with those things on. Man, she outshining the 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 um the bride or the groom. How? How? That's your perspective of it. So now, well, with that being said, right? I'm going to say there's nothing wrong with spending money on what you like as long as you don't let the money own you, as long as you don't idolize the clothes or the car, whatever it is that you're buying. As long as you don't, that's, that's where it becomes a problem with the Lord, when you idolize it. Okay? Now, Let's go to the word. I'm scared because I don't know what the word going to say. Okay. First Timothy. It's a Bible verses related to wearing jewelry. Now, this is about jewelry. So, First Timothy 2 and 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. It don't tell you what modest apparel. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Okay, now, according to what this is saying, it's talking about the women, right? It's saying that the women should dress modestly, not in sobriety. So let's see what sobriety means. It means, it means, it's a condition of having any measurable levels of effect. What? No, they talking about alcohol. They talking about soberness. Wait a minute. They talking about sober. Wow. It don't really. Sobriety. Okay, let me make sure that's the same. Same word that's in the Bible. S O B R I E T Y. Yes, it's the same word that's in the Bible. So now we're going to have to go to my Bible study. We're going to have to go to Life Application Study Bible. We're going to go to Timothy. Let me see if they got. I'm going to see if they have any footnotes on it. First Timothy two and nine. Two nine. Now let's go to the notes. Okay. All right. The footnotes to that scripture of modest apparel with shamefacedness. 
and sobriety, right? Hang on. Okay. Sobriety, not with broadened hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women profession godliness with good works. Okay. So now the, the what's the name? The footnotes, 9 and 10, in the Life Application Study Bible Notes says, It is not unscriptural for a woman to want to be attractive. Today, however, to what degree should women take this advice about fixing their hair or wearing gold pearls or expensive clothes? Paul was not prohibiting these things. He was simply saying that women should not be drawing attention to themselves through these things. Modesty. Now, wait a minute. You say Paul was not prohibiting. So, in other words, he's not saying that you shouldn't do it. But he's saying that it shouldn't draw attention to you. Right? So, I guess, in other words, if you want to wear Gucci, then you don't wear the whole outfit. Right? You want to wear the hat, you wear the hat by itself. Right? And I guess I guess you wear it, but you don't wear it in a perspective of the church. How can I say this? No, no, no. That's the wrong way to put it. Okay. Let's say you you don't wear it on Sunday morning to preaching. You can wear it to the park. Y'all going to the park, chill out. You can have your Gucci sneakers on, your your pants on. Whether it's your um, sweatpants or whatever. As a guy, your sweatpants on and your nice t-shirt. That may have the little symbol. of, You know, I guess in other words, it's saying don't be so noticeable where it brings so much attention to you. You just wear whatever you're going to wear. You know, if you want to wear the, the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton or whatever the case may be, you do that. See, that's what I do. You know, I wear my Gucci glasses. You know what I'm saying? I have a Burberry scarf. I wear that every, you know, one, another time. Another time I wear my Louis Vuitton. I got a thick wool Louis Vuitton. I think it's silk. Well, not silk. Like woolly silk scarf. I wear that in the wintertime. Then I have the scarf that I recently got maybe about three or four months ago. And it's a Louis Vuitton scarf. That I've always wanted. You know what I'm saying? And this is the thing. These things drop in my lap. You know what I'm saying? I don't be looking for it. I don't be going purposely to get it. But sometimes you things just come to me and I have the money and I buy it. So I'll be glad about it. I'll wear it. I got my Louis Vuitton bags. So I wear my bags. But, you know, I may wear it every day. Yes, I do wear it to church. Yes, I do go up on the pulpit with it, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, it's a small, I have a 25 and I have a Speedy and I have a GM. So, you know, the, the never fall. I have that. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but, you know, I'm not wearing it everything. I don't have the whole thing. I don't have a a Louis Vuitton coat, I don't have a dress, because the clothes does not, see, this is what I'm saying, the clothes does not interest me, I don't buy, see, this is why I say, it depends on how you idolize it, it depends on your purpose of wearing it, you see what I'm saying, in the beginning, there was a time when I would wear it based on me having it, but now, uh, all that done calmed down in me, you know what I'm saying, I will wear it based on me having it. But I didn't get it based on the fact of me showing off. I got it because I liked it. I don't even like too much Louis Vuitton. I'm not even crazy about him. And normally people wear people's stuff because they like them. No. I, I'm all for quality. I'm all about the quality and how the quality is of the item that I bought or the item that that I wearing I'm spending if I feel like it's good quality then I'm gonna spend good money for it because I don't feel like having to deal with buying another one down the line so at least the 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 
the benefits that you get from these these high end products is that if anything go wrong with them, you can get replacements. Like Michael Kors, something go wrong with your Michael Kors bag if you don't send it to them when you buy it. Depending on the price, see Michael Kors. Excuse me, Michael Kors got a certain price range that will determine the type of benefits that you get. You see what I'm saying? And I have had issues with certain Michael Kors bags that I bought. And, you know, I put it in as soon as I received it. And I got my replacement back, and I got it back in the mail, and it was better than the one I got. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm thinking about that bag now. I think that bag is up in the closet somewhere. But I pay nice money. It's a very nice bag. And I might pull it down now that I'm thinking about it. You know, and maybe, you know, wear it for my birthday or something. But, you know, that's why I say, okay, let's go back to the footnotes. It said, Paul was not prohib prohibiting these things. He was simply saying that women should not be drawing attention to themselves through these things. Modesty and decency are the key words. All women will do well to remember that beauty begins on the inside. A gentle, modest, loving character gives a light to the face that cannot be duplicated by even the best cosmetics. A carefully groomed and well-decorated exterior is official, artificial and cold unless inner beauty is present. The general rule for both women and men emphasize that both behavior and dress must express submission to and respects for Jesus Christ. There you go. So now you can wear your, now, now here we go. You can wear your Gucci. You can wear your Louis Vuitton. You can wear whatever it is you want to wear. What? Can I get that white and Elizabeth, you got to wait. I'm busy. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Get on my nerves with that. So now, um, what I was saying. So it, it's all about what you're wearing that represents who you serve. So now people have a tendency to think that because you got on black and white and your dress is down to your ankle and your hat is hitting the sky, that, oh, that's the same person. Right? But ain't nothing wrong with dressing for the climate. I learned my lesson with that. I learned my lesson. I used to wear uh, certain winter clothes in the summer, summer clothes in the winter. Stay sick. Couldn't, couldn't get my body temper generated right for nothing. Not knowing it was because how I was dressing. But I learned you know, going to these different, not so much as high-end stores. I learned a lot from You The Glow. I learned a lot from JQ, Gap. I learned a lot from these stores. Just like the stores do inventory and clean out their stores by season to season, we as individuals must do the same thing. You see what I'm saying? Even dressing for the Lord. You see? He's not saying there's nothing wrong with wearing cosmetics. He's not saying there's nothing wrong with wearing nice clothing and paying good money for them. What he's saying is that is your cosmetics is so far-fetched that nobody can't see the Christ in you because they're busy looking at your cosmetics. Is your clothes so far-fetched that they can't see Christ in you because you got your clothes on? See, and here's the thing about the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm back to that Holy Ghost. Because it will lead and guide you into all truth. The Holy Ghost will dress you if you let him. And see, the first thing people think when you say dress you, they think automatically that you start dropping this off and putting this on and all this other stuff. No, no, no. Maybe in some people's like that. But some people may not drop off what you expect them to drop off. They are going as... Let me finish it. They are only going to drop off what God wants them to drop off, not what you want them to drop off. Now, if you got problems with them wearing certain stuff, they may not wear it around you, but they wear it around somebody else because it offends you. 
It don't bother them. The Bible say if meat offend your brother, don't eat it. But it didn't say don't eat it when you ain't around your brother. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand what the word is saying. Don't offend your brother. Live peaceable with all men. So if you, I'm hypothetically speaking, if you wear makeup and when you come to house of prayer, you don't wear makeup. Because you know house of prayer don't want you wearing no makeup. But if you decide to come to house of prayer with makeup on. They ain't got no business judging you and don't want to be bothered with you and say you ain't safe. You see what I'm saying? This, this is my perspective of it. You see what I'm saying? Because it's the same thing. It's like I told him Sunday. You know, the sin, you got to understand the aspect of what sin is. Sin is not what you see or what you think is sin or what you don't like. Sin is what God don't like, not what you don't like. So if God said you ain't got no business backbiting and 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 what's the other stuff and um backbiting and malice in your heart and 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 um all the other stuff that that's underneath sin, then those are the, the, the that's that's what you don't do. And in that, it does not say God don't like makeup. It doesn't say God doesn't like pants. It doesn't say God doesn't like nails. It doesn't say God doesn't like wigs. It doesn't say God doesn't doesn't like pork. It doesn't say God doesn't like um, brown cars or blue cars. It doesn't say all that. It's only talking about your life. And let it be pleasing in God's sight. Go by what God wants. Go by what, what he likes. Not what people like. Because people live the, the Christian walk can't move nowhere with God because they busy walking after God, after the devil. They busy walking to please the devil and they busy walking to please God. But when people learn that if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It didn't say walk in the spirit of men. It didn't say walk in the spirit of how people feel you should walk. It say if you walk in the spirit. What spirit is talking about? It's talking about the Holy Ghost spirit. And you can't walk in the spirit if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. People can't overlook the Holy Ghost all they want. Because the bottom line for 2023, God said, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Because that's the only way you're going to make it this year. If you ain't got no Holy Ghost... I don't care how much you was professing in 2023 or prior to them to 2023. You better have it in 2023. If you ain't got it, you better get it in 2023. Because you going, you been needed. But you're definitely going to need it now. That, that, that's, what, that, 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 that's what I haven't got no different. And so far, that's what I'm getting from the Lord. That he wants in 2023 for people that got the Holy Ghost. To live by it, listen to it, let it lead them, and those who ain't got it better get it. Because if you don't get it, things going to be leashed out in 2023 that only the power of the Holy Ghost is going to help you through it and protect you from it. Now, mind you, if you had it prior 2023, you good because you made it through the COVID. And if you make, if you did make it through the COVID, God was allowing you to live so that in 2023 you can get it. Okay? So that's all it's about now. We we God don't want us to focus so much on what people is doing, what people are not doing, what they got, what they don't got. Because we the Bible say we are in the world but we're not of the world. So of the world is participating in the world. Allowing ourselves to be influenced by the world. Allowing people to come and tell you things that is 1,000% wrong and you agreeing with them. See, this is why I say I was going to say something to someone in reference to a person that kind of like disappeared Sunday. And I'm going to say, well, wait a minute. If, if anybody else had it did that, we would have been getting scold from the pulpit. We would have been getting, when I say we, I ain't only talking about myself, I'm talking about the people. Would have been sat down. You got to sit down because of the simple fact. 
of what they did. So now, let's go on. Mm. Okay, so we got that one. All right. Okay, so let me see what the next one. First Peter 3, 3 and 4. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. See? And you got to understand. It say I'm putting on of apparel. So when they be having, when, when, when churches be having banquets, when churches be having big services like pastor's appreciation service, and past the birthday, bishop appreciation service, whatever with appreciation or past pastoral day. These people get dressed up. So wait a minute. It says, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of platin the hair, or of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel. So you ain't supposed to get dressed up. I mean, according to what it's saying here. But let it be the hitting man. See, see, you got to understand what it's saying here. Adorning. It say who's adorning. Meaning, wait, wait, we got to go to the, to the one before this. Hang on. Let me see if I can get to the one before this. Hold on. Three, three, three. Let's go three, two. Let me see what two say. Let me see. Okay, here go. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. I hope this is King James Version. They say, one, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Do you want a little more context? No. Okay. Okay, number two, yeah, this is King James Version. First Peter 3 and 2 says, While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, who's adorning, let it not be. Okay, now we're going to go to the first verse. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. So this is this scripture is in reference to husband and wife. Okay, all right. That if any obey not the word, they also obey, may be may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. See, okay, so if the wife is subjection unto the husband, the husband may not obey the word of God, but they may without the word be won by the wife, okay? So as you, while they behold your chaste conversation, so as we say, while they, the they is the husband, Okay, they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Okay, then it say, "Who's adorning? Let it not be that." So it's talking about the hus- it's talking about the husband and wife. Talking about the wife's relationship with the Lord. To be honest, because it's talking about winning over the husband based on his her life. Okay, so now her adorning. Don't let her adorning be so. In reference to, let me make sure I say this right, because I got it in my head. The adorning is talking about the presence of God, being adorned by God, right? So, in other words, Paul is saying that don't let the adorning that you're supposed to be, what, what you're representing, be in your clothing. Be all about your clothing. Be all about the plaiting of your hair and the gold that you're wearing or the putting on of your clothing. Don't let that adorning be what your husband is paying attention to. So much that they don't pay attention to God. So even though you all dress up and you looking sexy for your wife, I mean for your husband, let, I'm going I'm to I'm say it, let your sexiness be holy. For your husband. So that way what you're wearing. Is only for your husband. So even if you're going out. Even if you're going to church. Your clothing. Is going to represent your husband. It's going to represent 
that you're married. I hope that's making sense. But let it be the hidden man. See what I'm saying? Don't let it be all about your clothes. So now go on. You can you can adorn yourself. Wow, now I don't understand what he's saying. What this is actually saying. You can go on and adorn yourself. You can put on your outward adorn and platen the hair. You can wear your gold and you can put on your nice clothing. If you want to put on all your Gucci, put it on. But let the hidden man, which is Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, be what's seen. Is that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. So you got all of that on. Hmm. Look and fly. But still, be humble. Don't let your... See, this is why I say, you can wear whatever you want to wear. How often that you choose to wear and spend as much money as you choose to spend. But don't let it be your God. Don't let you be walking around there. Oh, you like my car? Come on out, come see my car. Oh, look at your car. Oh, you look real nice. Then Jordan with all your Gucci. Oil. Yeah, child. You know I had to get this. I had to. Now I'm, you know. Now I'm bragging. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm not wearing it for the glory of God. Well, thank you very much. The Lord is good. The Lord blessed me. i you know, certain things I wanted, and God opened the door and let me get it. And that's it. So I'm walking through. I'm going on with my stuff on. But my my but but my my hidden the hidden man of the heart, which is Jesus Christ, is what's being seen. People can see the God in me even through my Gucci and my Louis Vuitton and my YSL and my Salon and whoever else it may be. This is what it's all about. So that's why it's not so much as, you see what I'm saying? It's not so much as what you wear, it's how you wear it. You see what I'm saying? It's not, how, it's not so much as how much money you got, it's how you spend it. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Bible say the money, the root of money, the money. Wait, let me give it together. Let's hear. The love of money. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The love of money <clears throat> is the root of all evil. So I can walk around with all my Gucci, all my Louis Vuitton, all everything I got on, but I don't love it. I quickly give it to the next person. You see what I'm saying? Because my desire and my goal is to go to heaven. My desire and my goal is not to hold on to my stuff. You see what I'm saying? So, let the hidden man. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection under their own hearts. See, this is all about... This is all about husband and wife. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's not so much as you shouldn't do wear this and you shouldn't wear that. It's all about husband and wife. Let me see if I can get the next scripture. Where is it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I must have got to go back. Okay. Le Leviticus 19.28, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now, they're talking about, they, they talking about um, tattoos and stuff. So, that's not what I'm talking about. Then, First Timothy, till we back to that again. Didn't we just read that? And like, man, shame for that. Okay. Deuteronomy 22 and 5, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now that apparently is talking about clothing. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to read. This is Deuteronomy 22 and 1. Thou shalt not see thy brother ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. 
Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. Wow, interesting. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of thy brothers, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. The woman should not, shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So let me see if I can find that. I mean, because it's plain as day, okay? But let's see if there's any other footnotes. Deuteronomy 22. Let me go to my... Let's go to the to the notes. Deuteronomy 22. Right? Okay. Okay. That's not that gone. Okay, 22 and 5, right? 22. Okay. 22 and 5 says, this is the footnotes. Let's read the verse again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, this is the footnotes. Life Application Study Bible, KJV. The verse, this verse commends men and women not to reverse their sexual roles. It is not a statement. Hold up now. It is not a statement about clothing styles. Today... Role, role rejections are common. There are men, wow, who want to become men. Wait, wait, wait. There are men who want to become women and women who want to become men. It's not the clothing style that offends God, but using, oh, wow, I, Lord have mercy, I got it. But using the style to act out a different sex role. God had a purpose in making us uniquely male and female. Let's read that verse again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so as are abomination unto the Lord. So what is it saying? Let me see if I got this right. So it ain't got nothing to do with pants. And it ain't got nothing to do with dresses. Okay? What it got to do, just like I said about the Gucci and the Louis Vuitton, is where your heart is. Is where and whom you're serving. So if your heart is for the enemy and your heart is to flaunt your money and to put it above God and not give God the glory. He give you the money. You go buy your Louis Vuitton clothing and you forget about God. But he give you the money and you go buy your Louis Vuitton, get you a nice suit made nice for you. And you come to church in it. You glorifying God, thanking God. So, the pants is not so much as recommendation, not recommendation, re represent, representation of a man. And the dress is not so much as representation of a woman because Jesus wore robes, okay? He wore gowns, per se. 
it did not make him a woman. And we don't know whether women wear pants underneath their gowns back in the day. We don't know that. Our britches, our trousers. But what makes it so forth now is that they're not making the clothing so much as clothing. They have other agendas behind the clothing. And that's what makes it abomination to God. So if you go to the store and you go buy you a pantsuit because you want to represent a man, you are abomination to God. God do not like it. Because he knows your intentions is to represent a man. If a man go into a woman's store and decides that he wants to buy a dress because he wants to be a woman. It is abomination unto the Lord. So, you go and you get you a pantsuit because you go to the woman's store and you get yourself a pantsuit made for a woman. Okay. Now here's the thing. Because you put your legs in it. You say it's for the man. The man put his arm in a shirt. So that means that his shirt. Is his shirt. And my shirt is my shirt. But if my shirt can fit my husband. And he ain't got no shirt. I'm putting the shirt on him. Because it can fit him. So now, he come to church, and somebody comes and say, ooh, that's a nice shirt. He don't tell nobody that this is my shirt. But I open up my mouth and say, oh, that's my shirt. I'm now everybody running around the church saying, oh, that's Jordan's husband got on her shirt. Ooh, that's a sin. That's a bombing. He ain't wearing the shirt to be me. He ain't wearing the shirt to be a woman. He wearing the shirt because he ain't got no shirt to put on. Follow what I'm saying? When I had a fire in my house, I lost all my clothes. So I had no other choice. When I, went to, when I went to the shelter, I had to wear pants. I didn't say, no, don't give me them. And I'm going to tell you something. That was in my head. I'm going around trying to find skirt. I couldn't find no skirt. All I found was pants. So now I'm saying to myself, no, I can't put them on because God going to be angry with me. So what I was supposed to do? I'm supposed to walk around naked with no clothes on? I mean, this is what I'm saying. You can't take things out of perspective. Common sense going to tell you what to do. I wasn't saved then. So I go put on the pants. I call my grandmother. I'm in the shelter for three days. For those who heard about EAU, I'm in EAU for three days. They ain't wash myself, walk around there smelling. Got to keep myself to my together so nobody won't smell me and my kids got my little kids got pampers we out of pampers i gotta be wiping her down with the panties on then i gotta keep washing her and put wash the panties out and put back on the panty back then they had the, the panties for the girl with the little rubbers the girl and the boy with the rubber so i had to make sure i keep them i had no pampers okay so now in the shelter, they realize I ain't had no clothes. They come into the shelter. People come there. Trucks come with all the clothes on. I ain't find no skirt. Crazy thing, no skirts. And back then, you could just go pick what you wanted. It wasn't no, oh, take this. Take, you only could take two. No, you need clothes, you take clothes. I was a fire victim. I went to Red Cross. Red Cross took care of me. They placed me in the apartment. They gave me clothes. They gave me food with the blessings of the Lord. So now, number of pants for me to put on. So I put the pants on. Now I call up my grandmother. My gr I say, Mommy, I'm out of the shelter, whatever, whatever. She said, all right, you get on. I said, I need to wash. She said, no, she said, you get on over here because I know you smelling more so like what you don't want to eat. So that's garbage, you know. <laughs> so I said, but Mommy, I only got pants on. She said, if you don't get over here so you can wash yourself. And I was kind of nervous about the pants and stuff like that. But here's the thing. I wasn't trying to be no man. You see what I'm saying? I was still a girl in what I wore. So now that's what it's saying. 
if you putting on these things to change who you are. You see, don't reverse your sexual role by putting on these clothes so people could see them. You see what I'm saying? You see the guys out there, they want to make up their face. They want to put on dresses, whatever the case may be. I think they call them drag queens, whatever. They not so much as being a woman, they dressing up like a woman. You see, but they still revert. That's why it's two different names for the male and the male and the girl and the girl. You see what I'm saying? But when you in your own self say, I'm putting on these pants because I'm representing a man, I'm going to be like a man. That's abomination. God don't like it. So I guess in other words, it's saying, hey, go on and wear your pants. As long as you don't go around trying to defile the body that God made you. Trying to defile defile and change your sexuality. When God made you this, you want to be this. You can't be this, so you represent yourself this way with the clothes that you wear. Okay, so let's go on and see what else is being said in here. It is not the clothing style that offends God, but using the style to act out a different sex role. God has a purpose in making us uniquely male and female. Okay, let me see what else. That's five. Yeah, that was just five. And then from five, it jumps all the way down to eight. Okay, so let me see what the next scripture is. So that was talking about the clothing. Wow, that's interesting. Child, I tell you, I tell you, get in the word. The word will tell you. The word will explain. You see, this is the purpose of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost can give you understanding of what the word, word is saying. Because our knowledge and understanding that we got carnally is not spiritual. And you will not get a spiritual aspect on the word of God if you don't have the spirit of God in you. That's why God don't want people to be fooling themselves no more in 2023. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost in you, get get it. So that way you can get a better understanding. Because I'm here to tell you there's going to be, just like I said, the the Lord said, there's going to be a lot of things that's coming out in 2023 and in the future. That if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to be able to stand. Why you're not going to be able to stand? Because you're not going to be able to understand. You're going to be living in 19... In 1910, and we're going to be in 2025 because you think this way, the how you think, and you think how you thinking is how God is thinking. But he said, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. Why? Because you will never understand me without me being in you. So he is going to reveal things to you about him because you are one of him. You belong to him. Simple. Okay, let's see what the next scriptures say. Okay. We back to 1 Peter. They running at 3. Okay. Okay, Isaiah 3, 16 and 24. Let's take that to the word. Isaiah 16. Isaiah, we talking about jury and different things. Isaiah 16 and 20. Oh, can't be Isaiah 16. Isaiah 3. 3 and 22. No, no, no. No, no, no. Isaiah... 3 and 22. Okay, so let's see. 3, 16. Okay, moreover the Lord say, because that's Isaiah 3, 16, what did it say? 16 to 24. Moreover the Lord said, because the daughter of Zion are hardly, hardy, and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes. 
I'm thinking the wonton eyes is the makeup one here, like cat eyes and stuff. Walking and, min- and menacing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their rounded tires like the moon. I'm presuming these are like the belly dancers. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose juries, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisp and pins, pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of girdle of rent, and instead of well, instead of well set here, baldnesses, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a grinding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. I'm presuming this is talking about them, them women that be belly dancing. But let's go and see what this means. So Isaiah three sixteen to twenty six. That's how far we had to twenty four rather. But the footnotes is from sixteen twenty six. The women of Judea had placed their emphasis on clothing and jewelry rather than on God. See, this is the same thing I was saying. You wear all this stuff. Why are you wearing it? Are you idolizing it? Are you putting it above God? Okay. They dress to be noticed, to gain approval, and to be fashionable. Go on and wear your, your Louis Vuitton, your Gucci, because you like the material. You like the clothing. Not because it's in the fashion or because, oh, I see that person with it. Let me go get it too. And let me flaunt it around the church. No. Yet they ignore the real purpose for their lives. Instead of being concerned about the oppression around them, that's 3, 14, and 15, they were self-serving, self-serving and self-centered. It was all about them. People who abuse their possessions will end up with nothing. See, same thing I said. Idolize them. These verses are not an indictment against clothing and jury, but a judgment on those who use them lavishly while remaining blind to the needs of others. You got all of this stuff, but you can't help nobody else. Just like I said, you got all, I got all my Louis Vuitton, all this and that, but I'll freely share it. I'll freely give it away. It push come to shove. Things like that. It's not more important than my salvation. You see what I'm saying? I have a car. I can't get to church because my car broke down or somebody robbed my car. Somebody took my car and flew off. Now I can't get nowhere. Now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way. So I don't have time for God. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it's saying. People who abuse their possessions will end up with nothing. These verses are not an indictment against clothing and jewelry, but a judgment on those who use them lavishly while remaining blind to the needs of others. When God blesses you with money or position, don't flaunt it. See what I'm saying? Then God give you money. You see what I'm saying? Don't feel like you better than the next person. And I know I had money. But I was busy sharing it with other people. Yes, I did. The first thing I did was fix up my house. The second thing I did was bought me some furs. I got me stuff that I always wanted. Got me a fur coat, about two or three fur coats. I got me the furniture that I always wanted was Jennifer Convertible. I got that. I wanted to get a car. That was the next thing I was willing to to pay like 50000 for a car, but nobody was helping me with a car. 
So I went and and rented a car. So when I came into money, the things that I always wanted, I got. I gave money to the church. The amount of money that I got, I paid my tithes on. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't um, forget God. After a while, the money did go to my head where I wasn't coming to church often and stuff like that. I was getting, I was busy shopping and all that stuff, but I wasn't forgetting people. You see what I'm saying? I went and helped people out. Okay, let me go on. Don't flaunt it. Use what you have to help others and not impress them. See, that? that's where it comes at. So you walk around, it's okay. God ain't got, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm saying about the gentleman. I ain't got nothing against him and what he's wearing. People is focused too much on what he got. And what he should be doing. I don't care nothing about that. I get the money. I walk around here with my Louis Vuitton, my whatever, whatever. I'm satisfied with it. I ain't worrying about all of that. My concern is souls. People be, oh, I like that. I like it too. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what, I'm going to tell you, honestly, one time somebody... Somebody was complimenting my things so bad. When I say so bad, not bad in a bad way, right? Not bad, bad way. More more so good way. That it got to me that I wanted to give it to the person. I wanted to give it to the person. I wanted to take I think it was a scarf. They liked that my scarf. And I was like, oh, man. Because I'm so quick. I, I, I went into the store. People were just saying I'm eating. Me and my daughter eating. And the guy was like, oh, my goodness. You eating. I went, I was trying my best to get them fries. I had went to make them. I was trying my best to get them fries out of the bag. I was like, here you get. I was going to give him my sandwich. I, whether they was joking or for real, I could give it to him. And sometimes I'll be on the train and I'll be there. And the people get on the train. And they be begging. I ain't going to lie. Sometimes I be in my head. I say, oh, my God, please don't come because I am hungry. I done went shopping, got me some food, and I'm starving. But I was with my grandson yesterday, and the guy passed me, passed us. So you got a dollar? And I was like, no, and I'm digging in my pocket. And I asked my grandson, I said, you got a dollar? He said, yeah. He dug in his pocket, and he gave the man a dollar. And he gave the man, I heard the man say, no, 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 don't give me that. So I was saying to myself, why are you telling him not to give him? And then he went and gave him another dollar. So he gave him $2. So then when he came back to me, I said, you didn't miss him giving you $5. He said, no, 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 I almost did. I said, oh, so that's why he said don't give you $5. And the man just kept thanking. He said, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, passed it on. But. He got it on us because that's how Nana is. Nana give money in a minute. I had food one time, and the guy passed by me on the train, and he wanted some food, and I gave it to him. One time, he asked me, the, not he, but some one of them passed me and saw the water in my bag and, and stopped and asked me, can I have that water? I said, what? He said, can I have the water? I said, okay, I dug in my bag and gave him away. Everybody looking at me. I guess they expect me to be like, oh, man. No, I kept a straight face. I think I was either reading a book or on my phone or listening to YouTube or something because I download YouTube uh, um, videos on my phone. And I think I was listening. And I went right on back to my to my video. I could tell the people wasn't too, you know, thought I was crazy. But, hey, that's my point. And it says, use what you, it says, use what you have to help others, not impress them. But this is not even talking about uh, what I thought it was. It said, they dress to be noticed, to gain approval, and to be fashionable. 
yet they ignore the real. So in other words, and so many, to make a long story short so I can end this and get on with my nightlife of relaxing. The whole thing, the word is saying, it's okay to wear your makeup. It's okay to wear your pants. It's okay to to be rich and buy your high-end clothing. Just as long as you remember God. Don't idolize him. Don't floor him. Don't make people feel bad. You see what I'm saying? That's why I guess that they have certain parts of areas in the world, I guess in different boroughs as well, for rich people. So that the rich people won't be in an area where somebody will be jealous of them. Which no matter where you go, people's going to always be jealous. You could be just as rich. The rich people is jealous of the rich people. So with that being said, back to Mr. Bishop. I have nothing against how he lived his life. What I'm concerned about is his soul. And pray God. I don't know how he is in his neighborhood. When his lives come on, I click on it to hear what he got to say. You know, I did say that he was too wrapped up in what people think about him and what people say. I don't know whether he kind of like fanned off from that because I, I saw a, a couple of, of his videos where he's not going in based on what people are saying in the chat. But I'm not saying that he don't do it. But, you know, some people's calling him a pimp and all this other stuff. I don't know what he did. Whatever he did is between him and God. And if his lifestyle brought it into social media, then that's something he got to deal with. His life is for him and God, whatever he's doing. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not going to judge him by his clothing because as we see the word, don't talk about that. It it, it 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 says it and then it explains itself. That's why it's good it's good to get a good commentary Bible, and it's good to have the Holy Ghost. Your com with your commentary Bible and all your Bibles and all your classes that you done go to and learn and got the grades to the top of the class. It ain't going to do you no good if you don't got the Holy Ghost to reveal the word of God to you. With that being said, y'all have a blessed night.